Hi, and welcome into EOM Presents. I'm Thomas Manning, Senior Interviewer for Elements of Madness. And today I'm really excited to be sharing with you my recent interview with co-director David Tedeschi and producer Margaret Body talking about their work on the documentary Personality Crisis, One Night Only, which is a portrait of the New York musician David Johansson. And uh, this documentary was also co-directed by Martin Scorsese. So it was just really a privilege to be able to speak with David and Margaret about their collaborations on this film. Thank you so much for watching and listening once again, talking to David Tedeschi and Margaret Body about personality crisis and one night only. Hey, hey, David and Margaret, I'm Thomas Manning. Thank you so much for taking the time for this. Hi there. Hey, Thomas. Well, I'm really honored to be speaking with you, and I'll get right into it. Uh, David, I'll start with you. Uh, so for the majority of your career, you've worked primarily as an editor across various projects. And obviously for this documentary, in addition to editing, you co-directed along with Martin Scorsese, which you also did for the documentary, uh, The 50-Year Argument, a few years ago. So what are some of those specific elements in a story like Personality Crisis that click things into place and have you decide to take on directorial duties on top of editing? Every film is a unique situation. Um, we went, uh, Marty and I, a bunch of people, went to Cafe Carlisle one night uh, to see David perform. And uh, it was so fantastic that we thought, we got to do something with it. So there was an impulse to document the show that we saw because it made such an impression on us. And um, that's where it started. And of course, the challenge is to capture the feeling um, of that initial performance uh, in a movie. Excellent. And uh, Margaret, I know the concert portion of this documentary was filmed in uh, January of 2020 right before COVID shut the entire world down, basically. Uh, so for you as the producer of this documentary, can you describe some of the unique challenges you've encountered over the past few years in terms of the uncertainty of the industry and how that manifested with this project specifically? Yeah. Well, we were, in retrospect, uh, we felt um, very fortunate to have made the decision to to shoot in January, which was really based on Martin Scorsese's schedule. He was supposed to start a big feature, Killers of the Flower Moon, that he's just releasing soon. Um, but he was supposed to start shooting that in March of 2020. So we were a little bit like, we we wanted to shoot it in the fall of 2019, and those dates kind of got, you know, bounced around. And so when everything shut down, in, in addition to it being an incredibly sad time and a tragic time, um, we once we were able to kind of regroup and, and figure out a way forward, um, we realized that we had this opportunity to spend some time with the concert footage and for David and Marty to go through it and try to build the story elements that were mainly in archive and in interview footage um, around that concert. Because I think they always knew that they didn't want to make just a kind of, you know, a documentary, an archival documentary about who, you know, David Johansson's career and life. This was really a film that, were, that was celebrating this kind of, you know, incredible intimate performance. Um, and then everything from that performance informed what archive and interview material would be utilized. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the interviews, uh, I'll send this question out to both of you. I thought it was really fascinating to have uh, David Johansson's stepdaughter, uh, Leah Hennessy, conduct the interviews for the documentary. Uh, so what were the conversations like leading up to that decision? And uh, from each of your perspectives, how do you feel that that was significant in constructing this portrait of uh, David Johansson? And uh, David, you can take this one first if you'd like. Sure. We had a lot of questions. I think a lot of questions are self-evident. Um, but we didn't know, you know, at the beginning, we were like, do we need interviews? And um, the thing about Leah uh, doing the interviews is there's a familiarity and intimacy, just like at the Cafe Carlisle. Uh, and she, there's a feeling between the two of them that's so natural that it really helped us move the story forward. They don't, to me at least, they don't feel like formal interviews. They feel like hanging out in the backyard or sitting in the living room with David. 
which is essentially what it is. It's also David feeling free to, you know, he says at one point about visiting the Chelsea Hotel and, and, and Harry Smith, um, meeting elders that he could learn from. And I felt a little like that between him and, 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 and Leah, that uh, he's, he's sharing wisdom. And uh, Margaret, is there anything you'd like to add from your view, viewpoint on that? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, again, you know, invention is the mother of necessity, or necessity is the mother of invention, sorry. Um, but, you know, we had this kind of challenge where, you know, they were isolating, uh, Mara and David Johansson were isolating um, at their home, and Leah was really the only person that they were seeing, and she would quarantine and then go to them. And so we were kind of, as the months went by, we were like, we're not going to really be able to get a crew in there. Um, and so this was knowing that Leah is an artist, performer, and filmmaker in her own right. You know, Marty and, and David and I were, you know, discussing how to do this. And Marty was like, just get, just let her, send her in, like get her to film it. And so we would do these Zooms where, you know, Leah and Marty and David and I were, she, you know, Marty was just telling her, like, you know, how, you know, what kind of an approach. And if he doesn't want to answer something, don't make him answer it. Just let him be, you know, who he is. And um, he gave her a lot of, I think, latitude and freedom to do it the way that she, you know, intuitively felt it should be done. And I think that comes through in the interviews. And... I to say that it, it's remarkable I've never seen an interview before where one person lit it set up a camera and then records the sound and the fact that she did all of that gave us the intimacy I was talking about because it's just the two of them in the room there's nobody else and she figured out all the places she wanted to shoot him <laughs> to. So yeah. there's like, you know, there's the armchair, there's the garden, there's the, you oh. know, table in front of the window. Yeah. So, yeah, and she would send, you know, um, you know, just shots of her set up and Marty and David would look at them. And, you know, it was a really, um, you know, again, just being um, in the moment that we were in, it was, um, it was the only way we could see, you know, getting, capturing that footage. Wow, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, this last question I'll send out to both of you as well. Uh, it kind of has to do with a few months ago, uh, there was a Q&A panel at the New York Film Festival after screening this film. And I believe both of you were on this panel. And during the conversation, uh, Martin said something to the effect of uh, music is the purest form of art. Uh, you don't need anything for it. It's just the human body and the voice. And he also mentioned that that's why he's been drawn back to these music documentaries that the three of you have collaborated on. So I wanted to ask the two of you to perhaps expand a little bit further on that comment from Martin from your own perspectives and uh, how you each personally connect with the art of music through the lens of filmmaking. Hmm. That's a that's a tough one. I, I would just say that in each of the films we've done, it's a real challenge to document or capture whoever, whatever artist we're working with. So let's say, you know, I edited a film called China Light, which is a, a concert film with the Rolling Stones. And there were 18 cameras in 35 millimeter. And there was great experimentation with the angles and, and working with capturing the music. Um, this, in a way, was similar that you have Ellen Curris, who's this tremendous, you know, director of photography. And um, there were only four cameras over two nights, four cameras each night. But she's such a um, wonderful DP that she would walk around and find things, you know, with a 40-pound camera <laughs> on her shoulder. And she'd be on her knees or she'd be on a chair or she would be close, or she would be far. And, her, and then there were three other, a team of total of four people. Um, and that's really the challenge, is how, how are you able to capture the, the feeling of the musicality of a performance? Mm -hmm. And it's all about the, the angle, but there's also an intangible, there's something intangible 
about um, like capturing the musical essence during a performance. Um, and that was the challenge. Well, David and Margaret, again, thank you so much for your time today. I know you're on a tight schedule, but it was really a privilege to be able to speak with you. And uh, hopefully we get another chance down the line to talk about some of your other projects. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks.